What's up, music makers? This is Luke from Sojourner Tracks at SojournerTracks.com. And I've got my orange hat on. I'm jumping into Logic. Tonight I want to talk about looping and copy and pasting audio files or audio clips. Um, something I've seen recently uh, is uh, a couple songs where it was done a little uh, haphazardly, a little quickly. Things were trimmed where they shouldn't have been. Things were trimmed in the middle of notes um, in order to make them fit. Um, when you're dealing with loops, generally in a 4-4 four, four song, you're going to have uh, loops of either 4, 8, or 12 bars. Could be more, could be less. Um, but generally, you're going to be working with those kind of numbers. And um, so sometimes if your audio doesn't fit into those, um, just chopping them up and looping them um, can have some pretty bad results. Uh, and you don't want to do this if this is going to end up in any kind of finished product. You want to um, make sure that things are nice and clean and you aren't cutting things off where they shouldn't be. So we're going to talk about a couple ways that you can do that. They're, this is pretty uh, simple stuff. Uh, easy to implement um, and by now uh, if you haven't noticed or haven't used the looping function up in the top right here all it is uh, you've got your eight we've got an eight bar uh, little ditty that I put together here um, tonight and if you go up here to the top right corner this is your uh, looping tool you just click and drag it's that easy it's a beautiful thing um, sometimes when you're, when you're, uh, working with audio files that you've recorded yourself, there's some, uh, work that you've got to put in ahead of time to make that functional. Um, and it's, it's not difficult, but it is very important that you get that right. Otherwise, uh, you're going to end up with loops in the wrong place. Um, they're going to be, uh, trimmed in weird ways. Um, you might get clicks or pops. Um, you're going to lose transient material. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, how we can do it uh, cleanly and uh, we can handle our audio. Uh, audio is a, a different animal than software instruments. It's a little bit more delicate and it's a little bit less forgiving, but it sounds uh, great. There's realness to it. Two things you got to be aware of before you start uh, diving into this. Uh, looping or copying pasting is that if you have timing issues uh, that I'm not saying you should go in and fix every note because that's what makes uh, audio awesome is that uh, there's a realness to it but if you've got things you can't unhear something that's way out of whack you're going to want to go in and fix those before you start copying and pasting and just uh, adding a wrong note on top of wrong note here uh, so go in and fix that, number one. Number two, set your drag to crossfade. And uh, we'll be talking more about that when we get to the copy and paste. So uh, just be, be aware of those two things um, before you get started. Um, so the first uh, method that we're going to talk about tonight is the looping function, which uh, I just displayed there on this drummer track. Um, is pretty easy. But here on this audio file, there's, a, there's some things that we need to do uh, before we go to loop it. Because if I went to loop this right now, um, you can see from 2 to 10, that is our loop. If I was to just loop it the way that it is, where's the end of it? Right here. That doesn't line up the way that this lines up. And that is because we've got all this extra space here out in the front. So we got to trim this. And if you go to the bottom uh, left corner of any audio region, there's your trim tool. Just drag that back right to two. It's got to be exact. Um, all, of the, all of these trimming uh, pieces for uh, looping are very important that they're exact. Um, otherwise, it's going to throw you off when you go to loop it. One other thing you want to do before we hit that loop button is up here, go to the uh, region tools and click more and you'll see fade in and fade out. Now, these numbers are kind of arbitrary, but um, I would just go for something like five. That's pretty, pretty good enough. And you'll see 
it just added the tiniest little fade in and fade out. Uh, and that's going to help uh, as you loop or if you're copy and pasting whatever uh, method you're using that things aren't uh, clicking or popping as it moves into the next section because especially if you um, if you had to cut into the audio a little bit and into this audio tail and that was going into uh, the next part uh, that's something totally different you could get a click or a pop because um, that or that audio wasn't recorded that way um, so you're introducing some some uh, weird things you can get some uh, different results with that but as you can see we've added our fade in our fade out and we've looped it and let's hear what that sounds like <laughs> can't hear a thing that's what we're going for uh, you can't tell that that's been uh, looped you, you can't tell that we did anything to it nothing weird going on there no no uh, undesirable sounds other than my terrible guitar playing just kidding um anyways next track this is our lead guitar um, and I want you to notice we're going for an eight bar phrase. We start on two, here's 10. We've got some extra stuff going on here and I'm gonna play that uh, real quick so you can hear it. <laughs> so that's got that uh, delay tail actually printed into the track. I, it was recorded that way. Um, but that's not going to fit into our loop. So uh, this is going to take a little extra effort on this track. So if we go here, we can trim the front end. And uh, just we just want to check we're not cutting anything off. We get a little bit closer. You can see we're, we're not cutting anything off. That's right on the downbeat. That's perfect. Uh, but as we go to the end, 10, this is where we want to end, uh, we're not going to have to cut anything important off there, but we are going to have to slice, and that's Command T at the playhead. To cut at the playhead, we got to get rid of this if we're going to loop. Um, and we can bring this back later, but for now, we'll just we'll throw it out here somewhere. Now, if we go into the region tools, and add our fade in and our fade out, we will be ready to go. problems with that sounds pretty natural um, and yeah just a little bit of work uh, ahead of time uh, will save you a lot of headaches uh, later and and trying to figure out um, where uh, where the loops go where they begin where they end um, why they're not matching up and uh, so that's that's the looping function what I prefer to do is actually copy and pasting, and I'll tell you why. Um, you can see that this is all one, even though this, it's three separate uh, loops that we've dragged out here. This is all off of the, the first original audio file. So we've basically just put placeholders in here. These You can't actually go in and edit these individually if you wanted to. And that might not be a problem for you. Uh, that's definitely faster. Um, but what I like to do is use copy and paste um, because it's a little bit more flexible. And you'll see on this bass track that we've got a note. We've got a slide in up here. And our first note 
actually comes in a little ahead. And we could fix that with flex time, but like I said, I'm not into fixing a whole lot of that stuff. That's not early enough that it would be uh, problematic, that it would be super noticeable. And there's this slide. What if we wanted to play the slide on every loop? Well, that comes in uh, on beat four here. So uh, trying to create a loop out of that is gonna is gonna be um, it's doable, but it's gonna give you headaches trying to figure out uh, where to start, where to end, and then making that loop match up with the rest of your song. So what I what I prefer to do almost all the time is I'll just go in here and uh, I'll cut cut out the part that I want. Again, that's Command T. So we're gonna cut out our loop from two to ten, just the way that we would uh, normally. And uh, let's get rid of this. That's what we're not going to use. And um, so now we've got we've got our loop cut out, but we're not quite ready yet because we had to cut into this note, and we don't really want to leave it that way. We can we can copy this Command C. Go to 10, paste it, go to 18, paste it. And that's all well and good, but we're not done yet. Um, so let's join these two back up together. And if we come to where the first loop meets up here at 10, you can see we've got this little hangover from um, where we chopped out that other section can just use our trim tool to drag that back and with the crossfade set on the drag up here we can just drag this and this note happened to be a little early so that's perfect we'll just drag that into this space now we've we've uh, automatically got a little crossfade in between these two parts here and we've gotten rid of um, a note that was a little a little early on this end and we've uh, opened up this note that was a little early on the beginning of the loop. And so we can just go down to our next section, same thing. We just want to let the uh, beginning of the n that note happen where it's supposed to and make sure we're getting rid of things that aren't supposed to be there. And that crossfade. That crossfade is super important for um, just making things smooth and natural so there you have it easy and if we give that a listen I'm guessing that'll sound pretty natural Um, one other thing we could do, what if we wanted that slide in, um, like I was saying, these are, these are individual, uh, new pieces of audio now, uh, whereas with our loop, we can't go in and change any of these. We can, we can go in and change any one of these in a, in different ways. So let's say we wanted, we wanted to have that slide in at 18 and not the rest of them. So we'll, we'll, we'll bring the slide in from, from the intro. Um, what that's going to mean is we'll just have to drag this back further, and we'll have these meet up in a different spot. Let's see what that sounds like. can see how that would work. I'm not sure I would leave it that way, but um, you can see how you could use that um, to do different things, to change it up a little bit. Sometimes it's it's tricky with loops because they tend to get a little stale. You don't want to overuse the looping function. So I like to do a, a copy and paste everything just because it gives me um, the opportunity to play around with things a little bit more um, 
get a little bit more creative and differentiate from part to part. So I'm not just playing it once and then using it throughout an entire song. So um, there are two options for uh, using loops in Logic Pro. I think they're uh, really useful uh, for building songs. And uh, if you found this useful, um, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later. If you found this video helpful, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. As always, check out the website, get part one of my ebook for free, as well as other great resources for songwriters. Remember, wherever you are on your musical journey, great songs are discovered along the way.